Hi guys, so today's quick chat is going to look at the British Half Tracks and the Laird Centaur and cover a little bit about its background, its development and who made it. The British have, surprisingly, a fair amount of documented use on half tracks. However, they never quite took off with the military to the same extent that they did with the US, Germany and the French. And the British did see their potential and saw their pros and cons. Wheeled vehicles were highly mobile on the roads, yet easily bogged down off-road due to the lack of traction. But they also saw the increased maintenance issues and costs surrounding half tracks. One of the first half tracks built by the British was by the FWD, or Four Wheel Drive Lorry Company Limited, of Slough. This machine consisted of two models, a short and long wheelbase version, but was made for export primarily, with both the Danish and Sudanese as customers, and was never used by the British military, although it was tested by the Mechanical Wheeled Experimental Establishment, or MWE, under the name of B4E1. The war efforts also imported several American-made three-ton Burford Kgres vehicles for testing, with the Royal Artillery, but never in any sufficient numbers. These were American Burford trucks with the French Kgres tracks. This involved having a rubber continuous band rather than the segmented links, but only three or so were ever brought and tested. Ironically, many modern IFEs are going back to a similar type of track today. Meanwhile, Martel, a renowned inventor of the period and influence of the mechanised warfare era, was also busy developing and making everything from one-man tanks to similar small roadless vehicles, yet he never used the name half-track. The interwar period saw a wide variety of half-tracks of different makes and models with the British, but only ever in limited numbers of each type. And while they led the world in military mechanisation at the time, by World War II, much that had been learnt was soon forgotten. During the Second World War, work would be carried out by Bedfords, a truck or lorry maker to use UK parlance, who made transport trucks up until the late 80s and even struggled on to the 90s. One of their earlier experimental vehicles was the Bedford Bren, so named as it was a Bedford truck with a modified Bren gun carrier chassis. But this never really took off, while another early war concept was the AEC Matador version, with a three-quarter track configuration. The AEC, or Associated Equipment Company, built several trucks and armoured cars, and had a go at developing half-tracks, but this, like the Bedford, wasn't successful and never put into full production. The UK was also supplied with Lend-Lease equipment. Uh, these included US half-tracks such as the M2 and M3s, which saw service throughout the war with the British, and even post-war for many years after, with fitters' vehicles and recovery vehicles. With the American vehicles mass-produced in large numbers of around 40,000 or more, the UK began to slow its own half-track development, as it had a ready supply of good and effective vehicles from the US. Yet for all this, the UK didn't want to be too entirely dependent on the Americans, both as a sense of pride and for its own commercial interests. Thus it set to studying the enemy's half-tracks it captured, notably German ones, for its own use. The British had captured several of the German SDKFZ-7 half-tracks during the North African campaign and promptly shifted them back to the UK in 1943 for examination by engineers at Vauxhalls in Luton. The vehicle received high praise upon inspection and along with the captured plans and documentation they were sent for evaluation, particularly in the field of towing field guns such as the heavy 17-pounder. Some of these vehicles were pressed into British service working with the RAF while others were dismantled and much of the technology reverse engineered, and within a year the British had copied and remade their own version of the German half-track under the name of the Bedford Tractor, or Tracklat, for Tract Light Artillery Tractor. It wasn't a pure clone. Changes were made, notably the steering was switched over to a right-hand drive, and the road wheels, while keeping a similar look, were slightly different, with a new 320mm wide track designed to replace the German ones. Many of the other parts were taken off Bedford trucks. The front wheels were just a standard pair of unpowered Bedford wheels, while the engine was a six-cylinder Bedford truck engine delivering 136 horsepower. Unlike the German vehicles that depended on the wheels to steer, the tracklet worked more like a conventional tank, adjusting the speed of the track either side. The tracklets proved very successful in the trials, easily able to tow their guns through thick mud, but were too late to see service in World War II and fell to post-war cutbacks, Although they were briefly tested in Germany, no orders were placed and the UK would use up its surplus stocks of Lend-Lease instead. 
Following the Second World War, half-tracks gradually faded out of service in many armies. The US continued to use up their wartime stock throughout Korea, but new designs or modifications never really went very far. With the invention of the fully enclosed APC design, first done by the UK, but <laughs> typically never put into production, the half-track notion became somewhat redundant. Once you had a vehicle that could truly go where tanks could go, mount firepower to deal with most threats and offer more protection to crew, the favour of simply slapping leftover tracks onto whatever truck was lying around was somewhat redundant, although they would see service in the Middle East for many years. So it might come as a surprise then that a British firm decades later decided that half-tracks might once again make a comeback. This project was undertaken by Laird Limited Anglesey, a small island located just north of Wales, and then changed to the Laird Group in 1970. They had purchased a large factory come hanging in Beaumaris, which had belonged to Saunders Row in World War II to house Sunderland and Catalina flying boats. The Laird Centaur, as it came to be known, was only ever made in limited numbers, with the aim for the export market primarily during the early 1980s. Seven vehicles were made, six used the Land Rover Stage 1 front end, and a seventh used the Land Rover 110 long wheelbase. It's often said that the back end is a CVRT, but this isn't strictly the case. The drive sprocket is, as are the tracks, but the wheels themselves are actually copies of the old idlers used on CVRT, as opposed to the road wheels. The tracks themselves were from a Scorpion, and rubber blocks were added to each link. Each centaur was driven by a Rover 3.5 litre V8 petrol engine, driving both wheels and tracks through a manually operated gearbox. The vehicle had eight forward and two reverse speeds, which were provided by a high and low ratio transfer facility in the four speed gearbox. Both track and wheels were powered through a differential built inside the gearbox, which could be locked if required. Centaurs were designed from the outset with adaptability in mind for a wide range of roles. Many different designs were drawn up, and quite a few were actually tested, from armoured ambulances down to anti-aircraft versions, mortar vehicles, anti-tank variants and cargo carriers, to gun carriers and mine layers. Laird also stipulated that the vehicle had a very low maintenance footprint, and anybody familiar with a Land Rover will require minimal retraining. The MOD did show some interest, and they were extensively tested in both the Oman and in Norway for hot and cold weather trials. As part of an export concept, the Laird Group set out from the outset to make the vehicle as adaptable as possible for different countries. No orders were placed with the MOD, however, and no orders were taken from abroad. The vehicle suffered from several major issues. It was not provided with any MBC equipment, and its armour, being essentially just a Land Rover front, made it very vulnerable to even small arms fire. The vehicle was also extremely uncomfortable to ride in, with poor suspension and very noisy. The tracks, it said, tend to jump up and bang very loudly on the underside of the hull, but this is often actually down to poor track tensioning over an inherent design flaw. It also suffered horribly on loose gravel, uh, with the road wheels swamped and had to be dug out when this occurred. It's believed all of the seven maids still survive today, which is an unusual feat for prototype vehicles, although one of them found in the Gulf was not much more than a wreck and is currently undergoing restoration. A running version can currently be found gathering dust at the VCC at Bovington Tank Museum. Well guys, that wraps up the quick chat on the Laird Centaur, so I hope you enjoyed that. I'm going to dedicate this video to my good friend Sophie Lin, who has a love of all things half-track. If you haven't seen her channel before, do check out the link below. Meanwhile, if there's anything you'd like me to research or to be discussed in the future, let me know in the comments below. Until next time, chaps, toodlepip.